myself and Dick will be sharing some words this morning. I want to encourage you that there are really no words that we can really express that can convey the brokenness of our heart that we feel right now. Really, it's not a time for great sermons. It's not a time for said that we weep because we love and we weep deeply because we love deeply and have been loved deeply. So if you need to weep, weep. There's something about the part of our lives that God has created us as people that have the ability to weep. And it cleanses our spirits where words cannot express the depth of our heart. The Father Himself, Jesus Himself, wept because He loved so deeply. He loved so deeply. We've been given roses this morning. Sophia chose to have everyone hold a rose. And I think that it's so appropriate that, that we're holding roses this morning because Roses are the highest symbol of a, of a flower when we give to someone that we love or want to show our love. I remember when I was dating my wife Sylvia, I, I just buy enough red roses. I sent them to the work. And maybe it embarrassed her, but it told her, it spoke something deeply to her heart that I loved her. The amazing thing about roses is that you have to love without thorns is love. Love without pain, love without the ability to lose. See, when we love someone, we lose ourselves into loving that other person. And that's what Christ did for us. It says that Jesus actually wore a crown of thorns. Sometimes I think, maybe the thorns, and I, and I wish, oh God, let the thorns be, those thorns be to have been made of roses because you broke your heart was broken for us and you loved us so deep that you were actually crowned we Matthew 11 28 Jesus said to me come to me come to me all that you need come to me all who are weary burdened and broken and I will give you the very fact that we're standing here in brokenness, but we're someone that we've loved dearly, tells us how much more important it is to be cross. And say, Jesus, you're all that I need, and I don't know any other way to find peace or rest for my soul than throwing myself at your feet. I wrote this down this morning where, where Paul was broken. He says, oh God, can you please relieve me of this brokenness of this of my weakness right now? And Jesus comes with the, with the amazing words, my grace is sufficient. And I wrote it this way, my grace is everything we need today. Everything we need right now is the grace of God. For my power is healing to your brokenness. His presence is the only thing that can filled the void. Miracle lived for them. Jesus said, John 11, 25, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. America is not with us physically. She is with us in spirit. She is in heaven. We're holding hands together and coming close and America is holding hands with the Father. When Henry called me, Henry and I go back to the first time we didn't open Bible chapter. 37, 40 years. After his 
search for answers to fill the void in his own heart. He comes to Christ and he comes to Bible school and we enter our Bible school days together. And there was Erica. First one I met. First one I met. <laughs> he called me on New Year's Day. He said they found me. This one is mine. This one is born inside of me. This one will never. This one will never go. I had that song going home. And I wept. I found myself weeping uncontrollably. Because Zion, Erica lived for Zion, the dwelling place of God. She lived for the church. She lived for the church. That, that portion, that song came from Psalm 87. On the holy mountain stands the city that he founded. The Lord loves the gates of Zion more than the dwelling places of Jacob. Glorious things are spoken of you, O city of God. And of Zion it shall be said, This one and that one were born in her. For the most High himself will establish her. The Most High God. God, we bless the day that Erica was born. Yes. We bless the day that she was crafted in your heart. Yes. And at the season and the time that you <coughs> sense was right, you birthed her into the earth to be, to be born in Zion. To have Zion ringing in her heart. She lived and breathed the life of the Lord himself will write in the register of the peoples, this one was born in Zion. A life is not defined by how one dies. A life is, de is defined by how one lives. A life is not defined by, by a choice made in fear or pain. America's life is defined by the way that she lived. Right to the, to the time and firmly believe that the Lord, in the same way that He sent His Son to die for us, sent the Holy Spirit to say, Erica, no more suffering, come with me. The choice does not define you. I define you. You are mine, you are born in Zion. That's what grace, the grace and the compassion of Jesus is all about. We all make decisions that we, we say, oh, I wish I hadn't done that. But that doesn't matter to God. But, but on that day when He reaches for us to bring us home, those decisions don't define us. He defines us and says, you are mine. He is the only God of the universe. He's the only one that is like that, that still every day reaches down to us to pick us up. He's the only one that does that. Erica was marked by the presence of God. I remember back in the old Bible. Uh, the only word I know Henry, is she bounded. She bounded into every room. She made her presence. No, no, here's Erica. <laughs> Life about her and her 
biggest Bible tucked under her arm everywhere she went because she wanted to preach. She wanted to preach about the grace, American grace. <laughs> yes. She wanted to preach about the grace and compassion and mercy of Jesus. to come to the mercy and compassion of Jesus. Come into his presence. That was Erica. She didn't just, she gave everything. Every, this is all I have, she said. Here, take it and run. So powerful. So powerful. What we remember about Erica is one thing. God says about Erica is the most important. This one is wrong. Can the Father say that about us? Even when we don't feel that we're worthy, even when we don't feel that we that we make it or that we can rise to the occasion in any place of our life, when we're at our lowest point, he still comes and says, You're mine.
cleansing of my spirit where God wants to come to me and say, Behold, I made all things new. But this is not the end of the story. This is not the end of the story of Erica's fruit on this earth. This is not the end of the story of our own lives being touched by Erica. I am so thankful. No, Eric, Henry, I said, why me? Then I went, I'm so glad. Because I've tasted the family, the wife. She is a seed that I carry from this day forward. She wasn't just an evangelist, she was an angel. You know the word angel is right in the middle of evangelist. She was an angel to the church. She was an angel to the earth. Spreading her wings over the nation, saying, you so
So we're just going to pray. And I had to write my prayer down because... I wanted to make sure I said everything that I felt God wanted me to pray over you and over my friend. Because you only get to do this once in the, in the company of people like this. We may never be together again. So forgive me if you see me looking down. I'm looking down because I wanted to make sure I wouldn't forget. So let's close our eyes. Let's picture that Jesus is standing here with us. There's a great cloud of witnesses looking down on this gathering. And Erica is a part of it. And they are remembering these words right now. And so, Father, we together in one accord, we first and foremost declare in agreement with Erica that you are love and that you love us and that you loved her. And, Father, we agree together that even now you are the one hearing our hearts cry and you are the comforter to which we look to. And, Father, we say that we can't pretend there's not pain today. Lord, there is pain today. But we are asking that our pain will not be wasted, Father. That you will come and you will heal it and refine it and redeem it. And that pain is going to be purified so we will in turn help and bless others. Father, the world has watched and sometimes looked at our suffering and said, where is your God? And Lord, we declare today right where you have always been with us, yeah. always. Walking us through this time. You have not left us. You did not leave her. Father, you are right where you've always been with us, beside us, walking us through this pain. Father, we declare to those that want to question this, you never promised us a world without pain. You promised us that you'd walk with us through it, that we would be able to show the world they're not alone. And so, Jesus, we say, we thank you so much that you understood those last moments. You understood the struggles that some people go through of wondering where you are. You had a moment on the cross where you too yelled out, yes. Father, where are you? And the same love that came to you then is the same love that came to Erica. And so, Father, we thank you for that love and we ask that every person here would know that love right now. Every person here would understand that the presence of God is with them, that your love goes before them, that the same love that was for her is available for each of us right now. And Lord, we thank you that those same bullying voices that bugged your son and tried to tell him that he was left alone, those same bullying voices were silenced for Erica too. Yes. And Father, they heard the same thing that your son heard. This is my beloved. This is my daughter, whom I'm well pleased. The one that I've called, the one that was born in Zion. And so Father, we say, we thank you for Erica. We ask, Lord, that you would remind us that the joy of her life was to see all of us fully alive and bringing glory to you. That the joy of her life was to see each of us being politically incorrect <laughs> and telling the world about a God that loves them. And so, Father, we uh, lift up the family to you today, too. And we say, Lord, would you comfort them with the comfort that they need and that only you can provide. Lord, we bless each of them to know what their journey looks like right now, what their what their vocation and their calling is going to look like from this moment forward. And Father, we bless them to know the honor and the love of you. We are not laying Erica to rest. Jesus is laying her to rest and bringing her so close to God. You know, the end of Psalm 87 says, after this one is born in Zion, this one is mine, it says Selah, and then it says, and then they sang, yeah. all my fountains are you. All my fountains are you. All my fountains are you. So before we go, we're going to sing Amazing Grace. And as we sing, you're welcome to come and Place your rose upon the casket here. Just as a symbol saying, Erica was born in Zion. She was a daughter of the Most High God. And I stand with that and say, me too. I want to be in with all my heart. If you wish to keep your rose, you can do that too. But if you want to lay it here and just say, we bless the handiwork of God. 
We don't always understand all, but God, my fountains are in you. All of my fountains are in you. Let's sing together. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved the Look to him. Be blessed.